Hi guys and welcome back to another video now today what I'm going to be bringing you is a Bristol Rovers versus Bradford City match preview now if you do go on to enjoy today's video please make sure you drop a like on it if you could try and hit 50 likes on today's video that'd be massively appreciated subscribe if you are new as well we are now on the road to 6,000 subscribers so make sure you are subscribed if you haven't already get your post notification bell as well so you never miss a video of one I upload and make sure as well to drop a comment in down the comment section down below what is your score prediction for this match share the video around with your family and friends as well now we've got another tough game coming up for Mark Hughes's men you know we're not on some horrendous form at the moment you know, I think we've kept three clean sheets in our last four matches you know last two games haven't been the greatest granted we've only picked up one point out of a possible six but two games before that back to back uh, two nil wins away from home we do usually do better away from home than at home this season I'm not really too sure why but we're taking on Bristol Rovers once again make sure you drop a like on today's video subscribe if you are new as well and let's get into it so my team, Bradford City, we're currently sat 14th in the Skybet League 2 table. After 39 games, we've got 11 wins, 14 draws, 14 defeats, 43 goals scored, 47 goals conceded, leaving us a minus 4 goal difference and 47 points. Our last couple of games then have been a draw, a loss, a win, a win and a loss. That then compared to Bristol Rovers, they're currently sat 6th in the Skybet League 2 table. After 39 games, we've got 18 wins, which is like the th joint third most in the whole league. 9 draws. 12 defeats though which is the most inside the top six and they've scored 53 goals and also conceded at 43 leaving them on a positive 10 goal difference and 63 points there is one two three four five teams right now all on 63 points from Port Vale in fourth down to Tran uh, now to Mansfield sorry in eighth all them teams are on 63 points some teams playing 39 games Port Vale have played 38 and Tranmere have played 37 games in that though uh, Bristol Rovers last couple of matches then have been a loss a win a win a win a win and a win uh, them last couple of games then being a 1-0 defeat away to Carlisle a 1-0 win away to Northampton Town a 1-0 win at home to Colchester so their last three matches have all finished in a 1-0 uh, the previous two before their most recent game, ending in victories, obviously their most recent one, ending in defeat. Before that, they did a 3 0 win at home to Harrogate Town, a 2 1 win away to Crawley, a 1 0 defeat away to Newport County, and then just before that, they had a 1 0 win at home to Barrow, who went down to 10 men in that game. They've played quite a lot of games so far in March. They played 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 games in March. Obviously, this will be their first game in April, so to play 7 games in a calendar month is always going to be you know, tough on their players, but we've got a lot of players returning back from injury now it wasn't really clear as to whether they'll be available for selection but Mark Hughes and Alex, Alex Gilead both confirmed that every player took part in some sort of training today apart from Tom Elliott which I believe leaves us with 27 or 28 I'm not really too sure what the situation is on Matty Daly BBC West Yorkshire Sport had tweeted a week or two ago saying that Matty Daly had gone back to uh, Huddersfield it was either an ankle or a groin injury I'm not really too sure I mean he wasn't the greatest anyway but the club didn't really say anything so I'm not too sure if he's just gone back there and then it could be come back with us for the last couple of matches I'm not really too sure what's happening we didn't really get told all too much I mean it's not like he's the biggest miss in the world he was was really really poor for us uh, on the whole you know really underwhelming but we don't really know the situation I mean it's kind of a good thing that he's if he isn't available for selection because we've got so many players that it is you know when I was building my team obviously I know a lot of them aren't match fit so the majority of them majority of the squad for this game will probably be very similar to what it's been for the last couple of weeks but to have them options back and available is always lovely to see Jamie Rayner tweeted saying very positive team news Hughes confirms Elliot the only man not to take part in some form of training oh sorry this week not today Angle and Issa back among the group but it's unclear if they're available for selection now Issa doesn't really matter all too much he's here for next season regardless you know we've seen glimpses of him in pre-season and that was really about it because he's obviously got two major injuries this season Angle is the one though where he needs to you know get fit and get match fit as soon as possible and show Hughes what he can do because he's out of contract in the summer and Hughes isn't just going to offer him a new deal because he, if he you know he's not seen much of him obviously he might have been able to see a little bit of him in training so he needs to get fit and he needs to perform because I really do like Angle and I think he can offer you something at this level uh, he says he's, um, Finkers and Dawson's also rejoined the squad from international duty today as well he also spoke to Mike Hughes uh, he said there was some good stuff on budget size for the summer conversation with Stefan Rupp uh, and where players may be coming from for next season he's going to upload the, the full interview that they've done over on I presume the BBC West Yorkshire Sport website so feel free to go check that out uh, he also did say that Hughes says they're looking to organise a couple of games behind closed doors to give the new extended group uh, sorry now extended group some playing time as I was saying you know we've got a lot of players now and 
a lot of them aren't going to get game time. You know, this is a, a problem that Derek Adams, you know, made. We signed a lot of trash in the summer. We've signed a lot of trash in the January transfer window as well. So we kind of left with this massive squad where about 10, 15 of them are actually half decent. The rest of them are absolutely horrendous. So it's not great. A lot of them will be leaving in the summer. But for those who are here from, you know, from now until the end of the season, they have a point to prove. Now they're going to speak about the team that I would go with if I was Mark Hughes. Now I've picked my team here based on what we've heard from Mark Hughes about everyone seems to be back in some sort of training apart from Tom Elliott. So... If some of these players aren't available, I've kind of just... At the end of the day, it doesn't really matter all too much. It's just my preferred team. I've gone with like a 4-2-3-1 a sort of formation. It looked like we went back to the 4-1-2-1-2 diamond against um, Newport in the last game with Jamie Walker up front. Wasn't a fan of that, to be honest with you. I think we did lack a lot of whip. So I've gone with a 4-2-3-1. I've gone with Bassing Goal. As I mentioned earlier, he kept three clean sheets in his last four games. Apart from that game against Port Vale, I think on the whole, he has been quite decent. Made some really good saves against Newport as well. Right back, I've gone with Luke Hendry, as always. Just kind of a, a, a bog standard. He's okay, Hendry. Doesn't really do too much wrong, but never really does enough right, to be honest with you. He's just better than our other options. Two centre-backs, Pordy and Songo. I think they've been fantastic under Mark Hughes. At the end of the day, they're League 2 football, so then playing out from the back, sometimes they are maybe going to get it wrong, but their commitment towards the club and the way that they put themselves on the line for everything is fantastic to see, so I've gone with them too. Left back as well, I've gone with Matty Folds just because Liam Rydald has been out for you know nearly two months now. Um, it sounds like he's going to be back and available for selection from, obviously, you know he's been in training again, which is great to see, you know, because a concussion injury, it could be a couple of days, but it could also be a couple of months like what it has been. So I've gone with Folds at left back for now just because we haven't really, you know, if, if he's been out for two months, he's not going to be match fit and match sharp. Two holding me Fielders. Firstly, I've gone with Elliot Watt. I thought he was decent against Newport. First half, he gave the ball away a couple of times. You know, he was you know, trying to get back into the swing of things because he had been out for a couple of weeks. But you saw in that match against Port Vale when Gareth Evans was playing his sort of position that we really did miss him. So I'd, I'd keep him in there. Pardoning him, I've gone with Levi Sutton. I believe he was on the bench against Newport. Hasn't been the greatest under Mark Hughes, but he has been played out of position quite a lot on that left wing. You know, I know he's got a lot of energy and he's got a decent amount of pace as well. But I think he's much better in the centre. If you have him there, he's that box the box sort of play. You can have Elliot Watmore as the holder. Uh, in that number 10 position, I've gone with Dion Pereira. Now, this might make a little bit more sense when you see who I've put on the wings, just because when he came on off the bench against Newport, when he had that creative freedom to go from the centre or the right or the left, where he was just able to float wherever he wanted. He was absolutely fantastic. He was a joy to watch. Um, I believe he's out of contract with Lewin in the summer as well, so hopefully he does stay. If he keeps performing like what he has been doing, you know, he's got to get that. We've got to give him a contract because he's been unbelievable so far. On the right-hand side, I've gone with Alex Gilead. Now, I know he's usually better either as a left wing back or as a central midfielder in a 4-1-2-1-2 diamond but I've gone with him on the right wing just because I think he'll give you a bit more defensive cover if you are going to have players like Pereira and the left winger that I've gone with a little bit more attacking freedom I think you do need somebody who's better defensively so I've gone with Alex Gilead on the right go with Charles Burnham on the left I think when he came on off the bench he offered his wit he offered you know he was kind of being man marked by one or two players every time he got the ball so he couldn't really create all too much but he had a few half chances but I just don't think he was on for long enough I don't think he's started yet under Mike Hughes as well so I'd uh, be interested to see him get his first start and up front I've gone with Andy Cook obviously Angle won't be he'll be nowhere near fitness uh, you know, he's been out since the end of January or mid to end of January so I've gone with Andy Cook up front just because there's no real better options who are fit and available right now and then that leaves on the bench O'Donnell, Staunton, Rydell, Evans, Cook, Walker and Angle so as I said a lot of players missing out on that squad if you have a look at the men's first team according to Bradford City's website the players who miss out on the matchday squad completely would be Oscar Threlkeld, Fika Kelleher, Finkels and Dawson, Matty Daly, but obviously we don't know the situation with him, Kean Scales, Aboisa, uh, you've also got Theo Robinson, Tom Elliott, Keelan Lavery and Nathan Delfonso, that's a lot of players, obviously, if Angle's not fit, you chuck a Lavery on there, at the end of the day, my team doesn't really matter all too much and I'm sure Mark Hughes is going to take absolutely no notice to it, but it's just all for a bit of fun at the end of the day, but it is going to be another tough game, now looking at Bristol Rovers' last couple of results, I think, what was it, like four out of the last six or seven games have all ended in a 1-0, so I'm going to go with a 1-0, I'm going to go with 1-0 to Bradford City. I don't know why, but I'm feeling a little bit confident going into it. You know, performances, apart from that game against Port Vale, under Mark Hughes have been fantastic so far. And I think it, we're getting more quality back, which is what we need. You know, we've kept three clean sheets in our last four games. That's something that we can build on as well. I'm going to go with the 1-0 to Bradford City. I'm going to go with Dion Pereira to get the goal for Bradford City. And I think we'll be able to do it. You know, they uh, recently lost against Carlisle, who were... A, 
kind of a bit inconsistent under their new manager. They've definitely been doing, doing better under their new manager than their old manager. But I'm going to go with a 1-0 Bradford City. Make sure you drop a like on today's video, though, if you have enjoyed. If you could try and hit 50 likes. As I said at the start of today's video, that would be absolutely class. Subscribe if you are new as well. We are now on the road to 6,000 subscribers. So make sure you are subscribed if you haven't already. Get your post notification bell on as well so you never miss a video of when I upload. And make sure as well to drop a comment in down the comment section down below. What is your score prediction for this match? As I said, I'm going with a 1-0 to Bradford City. I'm not also going to this game against uh, Bristol Rovers, so there will be a live stream. So make sure you tune in at around quarter to 10 to 3 on Saturday. So make sure you tune in for that. Share the video around with your family and friends as well. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you for watching. I shall see you all Saturday for the live stream. Peace.